One of the main shifts in consciousness is in relation to how we believe we can best support and foster character strengths in others. So if you were born in my generation or older, there was a strong um, appeal towards punishment as a method of teaching, right action and morality. However, the very act of imposing punishment is inherently amoral. So how can we teach morality through a method that goes against the principles of being a moral human being? This presents the question, if the function of punishment is not to teach morality, then what is the true function of punishment? And how is this methodology being misrepresented or misconstrued in mass media, particularly around the times of Christmas with the archetype of Santa Claus determining what is right and what is wrong. So in this video, I'm going to offer you a contemplation around your relationship with punishment and how you believe that being punished served you and has helped to foster your best qualities. From my experience, punishment has had a negative impact on my capacity to operate at my best potential. When I got punished, I never really understood what I was doing wrong. All that I understood was that I was causing someone else to be upset. So really, the function of punishment was learning that I'm responsible for the emotional experience of others. And if someone else is aggravated, annoyed or upset, then it was up to me to change my behavior so that I could create a more desirable experience for someone else. In light of this, the other lesson that I learned from receiving punishment was that my needs and my experience were intrinsically less important than the experience of others. True teachings in morality should not need to be coupled with harsh consequences or having to make sacrifices. True teachings in morality encourage people to direct their awareness inwards and to become sensitive to their felt experience. In short, punishment has no relationship to morality. Using punishment as a methodology is only teaching that we are responsible for the reactions of others. The alternative to punishment is through developing a relationship with another based on a foundation of mutual respect. When there is a foundation of respect, there is a natural inclination to want to create a positive experience for another person. Generating a positive experience for another person does not come at a cost to our own experience. We experience a lot of genuine fulfillment in ensuring that the other person has a positive experience around us because we love and respect them. This is a natural and organic process that comes from being intrinsically motivated towards right action. If we feel that we need consequences inflicted upon us, it implies that we don't have that pre-existing awareness of how we can best serve others because there isn't a foundation of respect that is creating that intrinsic motivation to want to do good. Our tendency to inflict punishment on ourselves and others can range from being very obvious and structured to being very discreet and subtle. I know for myself, while I don't consciously intend to punish myself, there are very nuanced ways in which I unconsciously set out to hurt myself when I have not behaved in a way that I wish I had of. The way in which to move forward from these outdated models of punishment is simply by developing your sensitivity and awareness to the subtle ways in which you are looking for reasons to 
be hard on yourself in situations that you wish you could have performed better. Instead of using language that feels hard and unkind, it is up to you to rewrite your narrative and to offer words of encouragement, support and reassurance in times when you have not operated at your best.